Arthur took his father. Now he'll take his life. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, Aquaman, and the Lost Kingdom, Black Manta. Considered one of Aquaman's greatest enemies, Black Manta has a singular hatred for the King of Atlantis. For decades, Mantra's true name and motives were shrouded in mystery, hidden behind the menacing oversized helmet. In modern times, however, his true motivations have been revealed. No matter the era, Black Manta has always inflicted a special kind of pain upon his arch enemy, cementing his reputation of one of the most ruthless and driven criminals in DC history. While Manta seeks the dead king's trident, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. Of the four figures that make up the new Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, the one I was the most interested in was Black Manta. Of my all-time, one of my all-time favorite villains in comics, he actually easily makes the top five. Black Manta, though, this time around looks stunning, and I have to include, of course, the hoses on the back of his head. Of course, that will make the figure a little bit taller. That gives us a figure that's about seven and a th about seven and three quarters of an inch in height, or roughly about 19 centimeters tall. For your required figure comparison, here's what the figure looks like with Aquaman. And while I did think, in fact, that Black Manta was going to be a taller figure, even including the hoses on the back of his head, he is, in fact, slightly shorter than Arthur Curry here. While I will credit McFarlane's team for including bells and whistles with Black Manta, the one thing, unfortunately, the figure is lacking, though, is the Black Trident. The whole purpose, I think, of Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom. It's even advertised, in fact, on the trading card that comes in clue with Manta, is that the figure has the Black Trident in his hand. And yet, the figure doesn't come included with it. He comes, though, with a flight stand, and that's nice to see, because we don't get that too often when it comes to these releases. And to be honestly fair, he also comes included with thrusters that go on the back of his jetpack. I still wish that the figure could have come included with a black trident. I'm almost even tempted to take my very warped-looking Justice League... Oh, look at the sad state this is in. Maybe be even painting this black and giving him a serviceable trident in the meantime. I'm sure that might also mean that we're probably going to be getting a future release down the road of maybe another Black Manta Gold Edition. Maybe that's going to come included with the trident. One only knows. Going back, though, to the trading card, this is definitely looking more like something you would see in the comics. I mean, again, to bring back in the Aquaman, it's kind of really hard to see where you want to settle on. I mean, like, I like the look of this card, but I don't know if I really like it as much when it came to Aquaman, because, again, like, it's kind of got more like a, like a comic book panel look. You can decide for yourself if you actually like the approach that they're doing with these movie tie-in trading cards. If we flip around, though, to the back, the thing I... I didn't really mention, though, with Aquaman, and I'll mention here with Manta, is that the back of the card only gives you really descriptions of sort of the generalized breakdown of what the characters are and more their backstory. It does give little to no mention at all of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. I feel like really with cards like this, it's not like they have to reuse the cards that we got from already released figures. This is the first time we're getting, I believe, this card. So why not just include a read-up on the back, for example, specific to the movie? Or unless they just really want to give a generic breakdown for that specific character going to be adding both these cards. I know I did say this in the earlier review. I was going to put this card away in my trading card sheet, but I know still looking at the other now two figures, probably going to just be ultimately bringing those back. So I already mentioned the figure does come include with a flight stand, more like a swimming stand this time around. It actually consists of two parts. So of course you got yourself the adjustable neck. Some of these are a little stubborn and stay in place. You just want to pop that out. You get to sell basically a larger oversized stand. I mean, I've already done the comparisons of these before, but if you put it inside, I mean, this is the regular black DC multiverse stand. You can really see how much bigger the clear ones are. It has, though, still the DC logo printed on it. I love the fact that they do do that. And if you really wanted to, you don't necessarily have to use it with the adjustable neck. I mean, this you could easily just leave off and use only just the stand alone because it does have still a peg that can attach to either one of Black Manta's boots. If you'd rather, though, go all out, just take the neck and there's a little open groove right here. You just take the end of it and slide it in place. And basically, you want to push it all the way in until it locks in. Can you hear that? I hope so. Once that's snapped in place, you still have the peg, but now you've got the benefit of an adjustable waist clip. The clip not only moves up and down this way, so if you want to have him more in a swimming pose, you can do that. Or if you want to have him upright, you can also do that as well. This opens and closes and fits nicely, though, around Black Manta's waist. You just simply take this and clip it around his waist. The thing about, unfortunately, though, is his backpack is pretty close in quarters. So when you are attaching, you want to just make sure that it's all the way on there. But yeah, you can get Black Manta in a swimming pose. Probably a little bit more of an interesting pose than what I've got right now. To add on to that, though, the figure also comes included with these thruster effects. 
these effects look very similar to the one we got with the uh, Batman Beyond figure. I don't know if it's probably the same ones because the Batman Beyond would have had to attach onto the undersides of his boots, so they probably would have used smaller pegs. So I think these are brand new molds. These, though, attach onto the, ba the back, or I should say the bottom of his jetpack here. See these little holes on the back here? You're just going to take the pegs and fit them in place. Very easy. You don't have to do much pressure at all in order to get them in there. And it gives you, again, a little bit more shelf appeal when it comes to displaying the figure. It makes probably little to no sense to have the figure just standing on the shelf with the thrusters out like this. But yeah, if you wanted to attach them onto the display stand like I did do at the beginning of this review, just clip it in place, and then you can have Black Manta swimming around. <sighs> Get these off right now. I'm going to put those to the side. Get a stunning look at Black Manta. What a gorgeous looking figure this is. Biased, I'm sure very heavily biased by the idea. I just really love Black Manta. One of my all-time, I say top five, top five. If not for top five, I would say top ten. Nah, I would say top five. Black Manta do, does look good. I'm glad to see when it even came with the original Black Manta in the first Aquaman film that they kept the basics of his costume still in place. Like, it, they didn't feel the need to redesign his helmet necessarily. They sh may have colored it differently, maybe from the comics. But even like with the follow-up film, it looks still like Black Manta. He's less black in the sense that his helmet is a, a lot more silver this time around. You have, of course, these very large ruby stone eyes. You can't really quite see anything that's inside other than just to know that it's translucent plastic that they're using. That coloring still comes over onto the sides here with these little slits that he has on the sides. Although, whereas this would have been using translucent red plastic, the slits on the side are clearly painted instead. Then he's got these big long hoses. These are softer plastic. They run from the top of, of course, his dome helmet all the way back to his breathing apparatus and breathing tank. Back to the sections here, of course, where, again, the thrusters are going to be coming out the back with some of then a little accent areas there of the red that match the nice red that they've also got on the side here. I really like the way that they've designed this. And even, like, seeing as he is in the film, I haven't yet seen Aquaman, the second Aquaman film, but just seeing him in action, just love Aquaman. I just love Black Manta, and I love the way they've actually presented him in the films. I would love to also see this guy maybe get a future release down the road where, hey, why not? They could also add, like, little beams of, of rays that he gets shot out from the front of his eyes. Maybe do this guy's release as a statue down the road. McFarlane get some ideas. He also has some nice silver there on the gauntlet that he has on the side of his arm, which I think extends out a blade, which unfortunately is on this actual figure. But still, the fact that they would have added a little bit of additional sculpting there on, a sh on the forearm breaks up the otherwise mostly all black and blue that he has for the majority of his costume. The colors are a little out of place in some of the areas. Like, for example, you can see, like, in his trunk sections, these are a softer plastic that they use for the trunks to, of course, conceal the joints for the legs. But you can see very obviously, everything basically is on, on the figure that's shiny. His arms, his torso, his lower legs, and then just abruptly here, kind of goes to more of a semi-gloss finish. I don't know why it had to be a different color. I mean, to the credit, at least, they did finish off and, con and continue the trend. You can see how he's got... Let me just bring the torso back here for example. See how he's got the silver there on the top of his torso continues on nicely there. But I just kind of wish that they could have added a little bit more blue on the front of it. Because he has sort of these splotched sections doing this with my hands. He's got it on his arms. He's got it especially here on the torso where you can see there's a lot of additional blue that they've added to the otherwise black plastic. He's also got it down below here on his legs. Some of the areas like his knees, for example, you can clearly see are different pieces. So like they're all solid and blue. Well, again, there's only just kind of like just sprinklings of blue all across the figure's body. He's got some blue there also on the sides of his legs. One thing I did want to mention, though, is looking at the inside of his legs. I don't know if they're deliberately doing this, but you can kind of see this sort of almost like a, a surface damage to the actual plastic itself. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. It could have just come off the assembly line the way that they painted it, because it almost looks like there's the plastic underneath, the plastic color, and then there's sort of this... I don't know, kind of splotchiness across the tops of his thighs. I mean, you could chalk it up to just that's his wetsuit, but it, like looking at it, you can kind of see there's a few little, again, little obvious areas on his thighs that kind of look like they're they're almost imperfections the way they painted the figure. But other than that, I mean, like it's a really nice looking figure. I love the tread that they put on the bottoms of his feet. Of course, I already mentioned the figure does have peggles on the undersides of his feet. You don't have to necessarily use the flight stand either. Hey, why not? If you want to just use the regular black display stand, it attaches on the bottom of his feet the exact same way. Now for the figure's articulation. I'm going to slow things down. I'm getting really excited and talking way too fast. The figure does have a ball joint in the base of his head. So, of course, you can rotate the head back and forth. My original concern was the fact if I was to bring the head down, for example, these hoses would get very tight and eventually rip. But you can see, like, there's enough allowance here. Bring the head back. I mean, how much is there? Even bring the head down. It never gets to a point, I feel, where the, the hoses get too tight, where I worry that something's going to break on it. That also is the same as well when you hinge the head back and forth. The only thing you wouldn't want to do, obviously, is rotate the head. The moment you 
start to turn it too far, that's where you're going to cause damage on the back of the hoses. You don't want that. The upper torso is going to be on a ball joint. Once again, you've got the lower abdomen area ball joints so that also rotates. And like usually with all these DC multiverse figures, you also get the rotation in the arms. The arms for Black Manta, because there's no shoulder pads or anything like that, he gets a full 90 degree angle bend, giving us a capital T. The figure does have a swivel in his bicep. That's actually the same on both sides. The figure also does have, although tight on this side, a double hinge on the elbow and the hands do rotate all the way around. Even on the side that actually has the gauntlet, there's nothing really that gets in the way preventing the wrist from rotating all the way around. Legs do split out, once again using a ratcheted joint. You can take those legs and move them forward, move them back, and there's also a swivel at the top of the thigh. Figure has a double hinge on the knee, a little on the tighter side, but again, I don't mind. Ankle pivot back and forth, ankle pivot this way, and of course, always appreciate the fact the figure does have toe articulation. Whether you decide to use it or not, I don't mind when companies like McFarlane add toe articulation. All in all, though, I mean, without really even looking at the other two remaining figures from the new Aquaman wave, bringing back in Aquaman, speaking of which, I would say right away, uh, Black Manta is my favorite figure. I mean, I have seen the other figures. I mean, they're, they're okay. They're they're not bad figures at all. But really, for me, 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 the real reason, first of all, why I even want to see the new Aquaman movie is solely for the actions of what's going to be going on with this guy and also for the fact of picking up this wave. Yes, obviously, I did want to pick up this wave because I'm a big collector of DC multiverse figures, but really, at the end of the day, too, I'm also very extremely biased when it comes to Black Manta. One of the best Black Manta figures, and we haven't really gotten a lot. It was also that Page Puncher's Black Manta, which I had to did do the review of. I really should have honestly brought that guy in for comparison's sake as well. I did do the review of that one if you wanted to check out the Page Puncher's Black Manta. I think this now counts on one hand two Black Mantas. There's also going to be a black and white variant release of that Page Puncher release that we are going to be looking at in an upcoming review. But yeah, I really like this one. It doesn't even necessarily need to belong in the film verse lineup either. So if you are looking to probably pass on the majority of this wave and only really pick up Black Manta... This is a figure that doesn't necessarily have to belong in a film verse. It's easily one that you could have just on display with the rest of your DC comic figures. While my anxiousness to put Black Manta on the shelf may have to be postponed until, of course, we look at the remaining two figures from the Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, I might, though, take my own advice and put this guy on the shelf not as a movie tie-in figure, but rather one that's tied to the comics. Usually the timeline when it comes to me displaying anything on my shelf is when a movie is hot and there's movie tie-in figures. I tend to put them on the shelf for only about a month or so after the movie is out. And when the movie starts to cool off, both in the theaters and in my own memories, then usually I'll rotate the figures out with something new. That was the case with the Suicide Squad. That certainly was the case as well with Black Adam figures. They serve their purpose, and for at least right now, they're relegated to totes until eventually I decide how I want to have the display updated, so to speak. Uh, Black Adam being, of course, or Black Manta being the case of a character that looks just pretty much like he did in the comics. I was happy, at least when it came to the designing of this of the suit, the way that the helmet looked in the film, that, you know, the term, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, there was certainly nothing broken about Black Manta's design. And I'm glad that the designers chose to keep it big and blocky, oversized helmet with the big ruby red eyes. Because of that, his longevity will be far beyond the point of even when Aquaman is forgotten in the films. I'm still going to have this guy on display. It's one of the best, if not the best, Black Manta figures that we've gotten. And now, of course, we don't really have a long list to go by. There's also that one that we got from the Page Punchers I did mention already. I did do the review of that one. I love that figure. But I might find that this one is the best one that we've gotten from McFarlane's team. The oversized helmet, the big ruby red eyes. The only thing that's really lacking on this figure is the additional accessory of having the black trident. It's teased in the card. It's obviously mentioned in the movie. And yet, even though he has gripping hands, they chose not to include the black trident. I mean, obviously, that's not going to be something that's going to be a deal breaker anyways. At the end of the day, it's the best Black Manta figure that we've gotten. And again, I can't wait to put this guy on the shelf right after these reviews. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And have you guys been at all collecting the new Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom? Or are you being selective? I mean, you don't have to commit completely to the idea of collecting the entire movie wave. Sometimes you probably may just be interested in selecting out only a few characters. I know some people were really interested only really get the Suicide Squad Harley Quinn and completely just passed on the rest of the wave. Is that also the case here for Aquaman? Is there any characters from this wave that you guys are interested to pick up and add to your shelf? Let me know down below in the comments section. In the meantime, though, if you guys certainly did enjoy this video, I want to hit with a like. But if you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you're on board to see the remaining two reviews... Definitely make sure if you haven't already done so that you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. And of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.